Wow, now they really pulled together to achieve success with the IAQ Tools for Schools program. Oh, I agree. Now are you ready to go in and do the interior inspection? After you. Continue the walkthrough inspection inside. Now, you're looking for indications the ventilation system is functioning, signs of moisture damage, evidence of pollutant sources like mold or housekeeping supplies, general cleanliness, or anything which might impact the air indoors. Remember to use your checklist to guide your walkthrough and note any relevant observations on this sheet or on a floor plan of the school. Remember to use your senses on your walkthrough. As soon as you enter a room, smell for any unique or objectionable odors. Your sense of smell has about 20 seconds to pick up strange odors before it becomes dull. Is air flowing into and out of the room as designed? If not, the occupants will not have access to the fresh air that they should be getting on a regular basis. Check the supply and exhaust vents and be sure that they are free from blockage or obstruction. Oftentimes you'll find books and coats on top of a unit ventilator in a classroom and this practice should be discouraged. In this case, we have a sensor that monitors the temperature and the vents are located in the ceiling. That's right. Check the ceiling and wall tiles for signs of water damage or mold. Observe the general cleanliness in the classrooms and mechanical rooms. Ask yourself, is the area generally clean and dust under control? Look for pollutant sources such as mold or mildew. This mold is the result of moisture in the air condensing onto a cold pipe and dripping onto the ceiling tile. The wet cellulose provides a prime environment for growing mold. Caution should be taken to prevent disturbing this mold and releasing particles into the air. Listen to the concerns of school occupants regarding indoor air quality. Do they provide clues to problems such as using their own pest spray to control pests or turning off unit ventilators because they're too noisy during class time? Or are there computers or televisions that emit heat located near the sensors? In these instances, these devices can provide a false reading of the room temperature. I'll tell you what, I'll go to the kitchen area and uh, check the combustion appliances. Okay, I'll check the bathroom and maintenance supplies and I'll meet you in the hallway. Okay. okay. When checking the bathrooms and general plumbing areas, make sure that the exhaust fans are operating. Be sure that all drains have traps and are filled with water. Drain traps can cause IAQ problems when water in them evaporates due to infrequent use. If the building interior is under negative pressure, soil gas or sewer gas can be drawn indoors through a dry drain trap. Our next task is checking maintenance supplies. Maintenance supplies may emit air contaminants during use and storage. Any odorous or hazardous chemicals should be used when the building is unoccupied and with a lot of outdoor ventilation. Occupants can have a variety of reactions to hazardous chemicals ranging from headaches, nausea, and eye irritation to more serious health effects. For this reason, air should be exhausted from chemical and trash storage areas such as a custodian's closet to avoid exposure to these pollutants. In the kitchen area, combustion appliances are potential sources of carbon monoxide and other gases. Carbon monoxide is odorless, yet toxic, so it's important that appliances are properly vented to remove combustion gases. Take notice of odors such as natural gas or cooking odors when first entering a location containing combustion appliances. Visually check exhaust components. Do appliances such as furnaces, boilers, or water heaters have flues? Inspect flue components for corrosion and soot. Do kitchen ranges or kilns have exhaust hoods? If inadequate combustion air is available to an appliance, air may be pulled or backdrafted down the flue, bringing gases into the indoors instead of exhausting them outside. There are two additional points to keep in mind. If your school building was built before 1980, check to see if the paint inside or outside is free from peeling or flaking. Children, and especially pregnant women, should not be exposed to lead dust particles during renovation or repair of surfaces that are painted with lead-based paint. Lead poisoning can affect children's developing nervous systems, causing reduced IQ and learning disabilities. Mm. Guidelines on proper removal of lead-based paint are available from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. Refer to the appendix in the IAQ Coordinator's Guide for a list of resources. Right. You should also test for radon gas in your school. One in five schools has at least one classroom with elevated levels of radon. Its presence can go unnoticed because radon is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless radioactive gas that occurs naturally in most soil and rock. Radon can enter through cracks or other openings in the foundations. Because radon's decay products are also radioactive, they can cause lung cancer. Refer to the appendix in the IAQ Coordinator's Guide for more information on how to obtain materials on measuring radon levels. Before we complete our walkthrough, we want to share a story with you about another school. 